Hello, my friends from around the world. Thanks for joining me here at JP's Path of Awareness. And welcome again to the new followers. And I'm going to continue on with Herb Fitch's work on Joel's book, The Thunder of Silence. This will be side two of Ye Are the Light. This is chapter 18, side two. I'm going to back up just a couple sentences. At the end of side one, he says... Do you see the word identity then as a key to your work in spiritual unfoldment? If you are not in identity, you are out of focus. If you are not meditating as a child of God, the light, you are not making your contact. If you are not knowing yourself to be the living light of the Father, how can the power of that light express when you are denying it to be your identity? You are keeping yourself outside the light. Now banish the magnifying glass. Banish the senses. Banish every limited perspective you may ever have and accept that he who walked the earth demonstrating the power of that light knew what he was talking about and that his whole purpose on the earth was to show you what the light of your being can do so that if you believe on the light the works that the light does ye shall do and greater works shall ye do for the light doeth its own works when there is a house a consciousness that is not divided from that light this is the grace of the light accepted and whatever ye shall ask in my name as the light shall be given unto you there are many ways you can accept the light. There are many ways you can deny the light. Every time you deny it as your being, you lose it. Every time you say how unworthy you are, you are denying yourself to be the light. Every time you speak about the times that you fear, when you doubt, when you lack, when you're limited, you are saying, I am not the light of God, and you're pronouncing your own sentence. When you are living in a life or a mind which can look out upon the world and condemn and see evil and accept evil, you are saying the light of God is not the only light. Whenever you deprive another individual of fathership of God, you are denying that the light of God is the only light. Whenever you can look on this world and see any form of evil, you are caught in the mesmerism of that sense mind, which knows not the things of God, and you are losing the grace of your being. Now then, you say, I seek freedom, I seek peace, I seek security. This sounds fine to the human mind, but again, again, you are cutting yourself off from the light. In the first letter of John, we're told what the light is again. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light, ye are the light. Now watch how it goes together 
back in John, in the very first chapter, speaking of the Christ which appeared of Jesus. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The light of Jesus, which is called Christ, was the light that lighteth every man that comes into the world. And the light then is identified as Christ, the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are Christ, the light of the world. And then in John, we find the Master saying, I am the light. Establishing his name to be Christ, the light. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me, meaning, he who accepts himself to be the light of the world, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Continuing in John, I am come as a light into the world. What that whatsoever believe that whosoever believe on me and this light that you are to believe on is established as the light of your being should not abide in darkness. Now the light of the world that you are to believe on is your identity. And in John again, we find a further explanation of the identity of that light. He that believeth on him, meaning on the light, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now here, the light is identified as the only begotten Son of God. And it becomes clear then, to understand this, that he that believeth on the only begotten Son of God, as his identity is not condemned. If you do not accept yourself to be the only begotten Son of God, the light, obviously, you're condemned, because you're in a different life than that life, which is the only life. And the condemnation is that you are in a state of non-existence or asleep or dead, whichever the word is that fits at the moment. Only the life of God is the Son of God. And if you are not accepting it to be your name, you're in a state of non-life. And that's the condemnation. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You see, the qualities of God can only function in the Son of God. And man on earth thinking of God is dead, is really dead himself. Because in him, the qualities of God are not functioning. He's in a state of consciousness that is not accepting himself to be the Son of God, the light of God. And this is the condemnation. That light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. We turn from the Christ, the light of our own being, because it would transform us from the qualities from doing evil, which are part of the human mind. Neither cometh to the light unless his deeds should be reproved. So the Antichrist in us says, I am not the light. Continue as before, and you must suffer suffer. But the Christ in us says, I am the light. I am the way. 
Now if you've got it clear then that the light of your being is the only begotten Son of God, then you see why Jesus, having accepted this to be the case, would say, Thou seest me, thou seest the Father who sent me. He had accepted himself to be that Son of God. And whereas orthodoxy has concealed this by ignorance, we see that the Son of God he accepted himself to be was the light of God which all of us are. In that light is every quality of God expressing now. Now God is. Here God is. Here and now is the light of God. And as you accept this, you are now following me with a capital M. You are following the master who says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not dwell in darkness. When you accept yourself to be the light of the world, you will not dwell in darkness. For in that light are the qualities of the only begotten Son, which is your name throughout eternity. Now you see how we're coming to that oneness. I and the Father are one life. Thou seest me, thou seest the Father. When are you able to say this? That moment when you can say this with confidence is the moment when something touches you and says, But you are the light of God the Son. And then you say within yourself, But then thou seest me, thou seest the Father, for I am the light of the Father. And the Father, I and the Father are one light. And in the knowledge of that, you're in conscious union with God. Actually, where you are, God expresses in fullness. And you see, because this is now the present state of your being, whether you are aware of it or not. Whenever you believe you are incomplete in any way, in that belief that you are incomplete, you are saying, I am not the light of God. I am not the child of God. But when you accept that I am now complete, you are saying, I am the child of God because the Son of God hath all that the Father hath. In your acceptance of completeness, you are accepting identity. And that acceptance of completeness is reflected in the way you move and have your being in this world. Because you are complete as the child of God, as the light of God. You let the light do its own work, manifesting through your enlightened consciousness itself. Always identify properly realized. Identity properly realized makes you the transparency for the light. You cannot be a transparency for the light unless you're in the identity realized as the light. And then through you the qualities must express. The density of our human consciousness prevents us from being a transparency for the light. Because really, when you think of being a transparency, you're also saying at the same time that humanly I am nothing. If you are something as a human, then you are not the light. You cannot be the light and a human something. And so you find that the highest goal in your spiritual unfoldment is to be a nothing, humanly. 
That is the goal, to be nothing. For only when I am nothing, I am the pure light. And then the pure light expresses as the allness of God where I stand. To die to mortality is to be nothing. To die to mortality in consciousness is to accept that God is all. And because God is all, there can be no mortality. And in the belief that there is a mortal me, I am denying the allness of God. And that allness cannot function in a mortal being. The light can only function as itself and will only appear in the absence of the density of a mortal consciousness. Behind that veil of the mortal consciousness is the fullness of the light of your own being. Again in John, we are told we are the children of the light. That's for those of us who may still doubt that we are. While you have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of the light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. It's his authority that we are the children of the light. Now Paul picked this up in Thessalonians and in Hebrews. I'm going to skip that, but I'd like you to look at 1 John again. For 1 John is either the John who wrote the original gospel or another. Well, presume for the moment that it may be he, seasoned, illumined, free. It was he who wrote the revelation of St. John. And here he takes us into the realm of the light in a different way. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. We have learned that the light is the Son. Whosoever denieth that he is the light, hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. As you acknowledge the light, you are acknowledging that you are that light and you are the Son, and then you have the Father. Now this is from the highest consciousness on the face of this physical earth at the time it was written. Only John had the whole truth. At least he is the only one we know about, and he had studied. He'd reached the level where he could receive and commune directly with Jesus Christ in another realm, which was the way the revelation of St. John was written. And he says, unless you accept the Son, you do not have the Father. And the Son he's talking about has been revealed as the light of your being. Unless you accept yourself to be that light, then you are separated from the Father. And right there, you have the cause of every problem on the face of this earth. Man, not knowing he is the light of God, does not accept himself or know that he is the light. And that light is the Son. And therefore, man does not have the Father. And the grace, the glory, the power, the dominion of the Father, which is the light of every man, is lying there, latent, waiting for man to acknowledge me in the midst of him. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you? Meaning, in Christ Jesus and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. In other words, through Christ Jesus, the veil of darkness was rent. 
and the light of each man was revealed. The light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light. If you accept yourself to be the light, say you're in the light. And hateth his brother is in darkness, even until now. This is telling us that you cannot accept a personal light. The light is universal. The light is in every man. You cannot say it is mine and not his. Again, this is being made clear by John. The only one you hurt when you say, that fellow does not have the light in him, but I do. The one you hurt is yourself and not the other fellow. This is very important. We must accept the universal light of all men. That is the only way the light can function in you. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. To stumble means to walk out of Eden, walk out of grace. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Now then, we are being lifted to that level of consciousness which says, I cannot say less than the Master said. He said, Ye are the light of the world. And I cannot say, I am, but you are not. He said, follow in my word. I must say, ye are the light of the world. I must see this as the reality of every person on earth. No matter what appearance he is showing forth to me, this is the emphasis that John is bringing to us. That we do not break the continuity of the light be exclu by excluding someone. For the one we exclude will be ourselves. I'm going to recommend that you read 1 John 3, 4, and 5. I'd like just to highlight just a few of them. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knoweth him not. You see then, the love then of God is that you are the living light of God, and that love is omnipresent. Do you see then, there is nothing you must do to make it so? It is an acceptance rather than a doing of it rather than an attaining of it. It is a fact. The light of God is your being, and to John, it represents divine love expressing by making you his light. And all we have to do is learn to accept all through 3, 4, and 5 of the first epistle. I mean the chapters 3, 4, and 5 you'll find emphasis again and again and again on love. And the emphasis is on love because, as he puts it, because if you're not loving them, you're not the light. Because the light is loving. You will recognize that if you're not loving, you're not accepting yourself and your neighbor as that light. And when you're not accepting yourself as that light, its quality cannot function in you. You can have all the invisible abundance in the world and appear as a pauper because you have not accepted that you are the light and because you insist that the other fellow across the street isn't the light. You are being kept from its experience in you. You can see now that God
can only function in the light because God is the light. And unless you are transformed in consciousness to be that light, the function of God in you never takes place in your outer visible experience. Now let's look back at what Matthew said originally to see if we can get a clearer feeling about it. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. In the acceptance of light as your name, the good works will show forth and your light will be a blessing upon the world. Now, you've undoubtedly heard of world work and there are many people around the world who were taught to do world work. They will sit down and pray. They'll pray for peace. They'll pray for all kinds of things under the assumption that they're doing a great deal of good. The only way you're going to do any good for, the, for this world is to accept that you are the light and that the light is everywhere. You will not then pray for peace. You will not then pray for harmony. You will not then pray for God to appear in various forms and conditions throughout the world. You will accept that God is already the light of the world in your consciousness and that no one is excluded or can be. And you will accept that beside the light of God, nothing exists. There is no place where peace can come. No place where harmony can come. You will recognize that peace is there in the light of God. Harmony is there in the light of God. There is no place where poverty can be stopped. Abundance is there in the light of God. It is important to see that God will never become abundance. Become harmony. Become anything. God is. The light is. We are the light of the world. No one can become what they are. It is the recognition of this infinite isness and the repudiation and rejection of every appearance to the contrary so that I'm not trying to end war or end starvation or end overpopulation or end the problems of the world but rather to know that God is all and the light of God is all and every appearance of a problem is non-existent in reality. This must be your enlightened consciousness. If you would do world work, you have nothing to give the world if you come to it with a darkened human consciousness. Only the light of your consciousness can light the world. And ye, and ye are the light. And the world is the light. And every man who walks the earth is the light. And we are told, deny this to no man. Do not deny the presence of God anywhere. Do not accept the appearance of poverty as fact or you deny the presence of God where the poverty is. Wherever you accept any form of disease or error, you are denying the presence of God there. You are denying the universality of the light, and you 
are rising no higher than the human mind. We must be overshadowed by the presence, always, to be lifted above human concepts. And as we are overshadowed by this presence, we still have a distance to go because there's still a me being overshadowed. And if we don't know there's still a distance to go because we have felt the presence, we're liable to be shocked into discovering that we're not as high as we thought. Always there are levels in which you feel the presence, but you will never be permitted to be less than perfect. Do not be surprised at the catastrophes that seem to come before you from time to time. The only reason they happen is because you need them from time to time. You need them because you cannot leave the human experience with a flaw. If you do, you must come back. You are being perfected to the degree that you are flawless, pure, immaculate, in every possible way because only the flawless can live in eternity. And so, even though you may think you may have risen very high and then are startled when an accident has occurred, don't be surprised. It was necessary, even though you've felt the presence many times. There was still a you feeling the presence. There must come a time and a place and a moment when the you that feels the presence is no longer there. When you're not even a spiritual being. When you're not a good being when you do not have spiritual quality, when only the presence is there. We see Thee. We see the Father who sent Thee and the total mortal consciousness which says, I felt the presence last week, is no longer there. All that is there is what has ever been there, the pure, undiluted light of God. We are all being perfected to that level. And while we are being perfected to that level, accidents must occur. You must be lifted to a state of flawlessness so that you make your transition into eternity where you cannot survive with a flaw. The message is always, let yourself be lived by the Christ. You will discover this light that you acknowledge to be your name is the power, is the light, is the truth, is the way, is the resurrection, is the will, is the allness of God expressing. And it needs no human help whatsoever. It lives itself perfectly in order for you to be perfect and when you do not permit it to do that karmic law will bat you down again and again and again because it is going to live itself it is going to make you a perfect transparency until you realize you're not even that. You are it, itself. When there's one where you are and not the presence and you, that is when the catastrophes, the accidents, the problems, and the lacks and the limitations will cease. When you have died to mortality, when you are the living light and only that light, and then the voice, God, only speaks in the light. God never spake to a mortal being.
God never heard of a mortal being. There isn't a single mortal being on the face of the earth. God never made one. All is the light of God, and only in that light do we hear the thunder of silence that melts the illusions of the sense mind. Then we're no longer limited to the visible, tangible, manifestations of the world, but the visible universe now is the spiritual universe. We walk in the garden as the light experiencing its own fullness, its own wholeness, its own completeness. All that that light is, is the completed, demonstrated truth already waiting only for your acceptance. There will be 20 or so of us here next week, and we all, we will all be the one light. And that one light in the silence will hear the voice of the Father. Then, we will understand why John, who accepted himself to be the light of the Father, could say, the following revelation was given to me by Jesus Christ in communion. We will understand that we, as the light, are moving into the realm where all souls who have attained now live. And we too may commune with those who have accepted and lived as the light, accepting no other God before that light. You can prepare for next week by reading John, first epistle, chapters three, four, and five, in addition to the page and a half in the thunder of silence, which is the last chapter the still small voice that'll be next week and then the following week we're going directly into the revelation of st john if you're reaching a place where you find your human mind does not function so well as its level that is exactly where we hope to arrive a place where the human mind cannot function, for there is no human mind in eternity. We are letting the light live itself as us. Well, I'll look for you next week. Thanks for being here today. That's the end. Chapter 18. As we again allow that awareness of true identity. That as we look out to the world we see only God's perfection. We don't see mortality. We don't see the finite. We see the infinite invisible, as Joel says. We claim the infinite harvest as Jesus said, allow that infinite harvest to be our supply, our love for this world.
so great to talk with you and with a few of you on a deeper level and look forward to speaking to others and meeting the new followers so appreciate you and nothing greater as I've mentioned to a few of you of being a part of this light that may be lifting you if you're ready nothing greater in this world than to bear witness to that truth with you so appreciate you all much love and talk to you on the next one.